So, how does Zap do his turns? Particularly, I'm playing the turn of the warp in game right now. We have a 2v2 PvP game in the warp 10 mod. I am the Andorian Empire, I am allied with the Klingons and playing against the other two. So, what's the first thing you do when you when do you do your turn? What I do is I uh, check the log, obviously. Looks like my ally researched sensors. That's good, I wanted to research those. And I have uh, finished level 3 inject photons. Well, so far so good. Anything other interesting happening? Hmm. Politics and Inter is usually the boring tab, as is miscellaneous, especially because there's nothing here. More interesting tab is usually this one, especially since last turn I tried to invade the homeworld of the Federation Federation. Uh, it didn't go so well. I lost a bunch of ships, I mean like two cruisers survived, and all the fighters I sent in died horribly. Uh, cause of that was the presence of some very strong regenerative planet shields, which I didn't expect to be there. But it looks like this turn, after I decided I'd just keep the ships that survived last fight on the planet, I would keep them there to blockade, so it seems like they've died too. I don't know why. I've set these to blockade the planet. Maybe I should have double-checked in a simulation what they do in the, uh, in the strategy. So, what's this planet look like? Did he build anything new this turn? Yeah, just troops. I don't particularly care about that. Oh yeah, these are pretty basic troops. Should generate a phaser. If he builds like 10 troops a turn, he can build troops for a long time before he's gonna be able to defend against the fighters that I can deploy on his planets. The nasty things are these planet shields, weapon platforms with these large subspace deflectors. Uh, yeah, I see 5, open the troop 2, thank you. 700 shield points per generator and uh, regenerate in like 4 seconds, which makes for a very strong planet shield. These 5 weapon platforms are Borg designs. This one built by him. He uh, gifted the planet to his ally, who has the Borg ship said. And he built those uh, five weapon platforms and then he uh, just gave it back to him and then he built a couple more. They use mostly Graviton Hellbores, which are nasty missiles, high damage, but they can be shot down all the same. So if you have heavy PD like I do on my ships, it's not much of a problem. As it would turn out. So, what do my ships do? They are set, they are all in the fleet, I think they're all in the same task group, set to blockade planet. <sighs> and what do the ships do? Fly in. Uh, they're not supposed to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, that is SE5 in a nutshell. The ship's not doing what you want them to do in tactical combat. Well, is it at least going to kill the space yard here? Man, I would have really liked to keep these cruisers. It took me like uh, four or five turns to build on each planet, and I only have a limited industrial capacity. So why do the others die? Yeah, this ship is a frigate that also has a phaser on it, or two even. Just gets shot up on the run part of the uh, space yard. It's good. Oh, the other cruiser must have also died. At least the repair ship that was supposed to repair the damaged ships has a good sense to run away. Well, uh, there's also a comment from my ally. He has uh, sent three uh, uh, three carriers into a fighter group that was defending a war point. The fighters, all, the carriers, all horribly died. But because SE5 is logical, makes sense, all the fighters got dropped on the same tile without causing another combat, so he had these fighters available. And looks like he just he just left them there while uh, they were intercepted by a fighter group. And it looks like his fighters got uh, wiped out pretty nice here. 
Yeah, which fighters are his? These are the Borg fighters, erasers. They have graviton beams, which are pretty high damage weapons. They're reasonably uh, big for fighters. And then the F-Zeros. Oh, does he really have DUCs on these? I know he's afterburners and shield generator, but DUCs, really? DUCs? Don't you have disruptors? I think he has disruptors. Yeah, but I'm not particularly surprised that they all died horribly. The UCs just are not that great a weapon. And I think uh, the Borg ships might even have... Uh, yeah, they have combat sensors. It was only level 2, it's only 10%, but it does help. Oh yeah, and those older designs don't have graviton beams, they have 4 disruptors. So efficiency mounted and a 1, si one kiloton each. But even with the low damage, that makes for some effective weapons. Well, looks like his attack there didn't uh, didn't manage to kill anything. <sighs> anything else happen this turn? Build a bunch of stuff. Yeah, um, I usually don't go through all of these uh, items individually. What matters the most if, is if you see something like uh, couldn't produce any units, planet was full, or something like that, because then that requires intervention. So. This system here, ar around this system here, is the war zone. I live in these systems up here. My ally lives down here in the reddish ones. Enemies are here somewhere, and this is the home system of the Federation Federation. That's that uh, planet we failed at, uh, failed at killing, or invading, or whatever we're going to try to do with it. And uh, there's just this whole fleet. Set to blockade enemy planets, both in attack and defense strategies. Not that I had anything in Task Force 4, I just set it all in Task Force 1. Uh, suiciding into the enemy planet. Where did it do that? Postmortem. Where did the fleet die? Blockade enemy planet. What's the strategy set to it? The strategies have changed in War 10 mod compared to just regular balance mod. And where is planet with colony? Huh. Constructed world, do not engage. So far so good, but where is planet with colony? Planet with colony, do not engage. Interestingly, mega sets also not, do not engage. Oh, because they're pr probably because their uh, satellites are going to be mostly de deployed right around the planet. That makes sense that you wouldn't want to engage these. Ram, stellar manipulation ships, that's uh, not sure exactly why that is there. Defense bases get, uh, get attacked though. What's the difference between attack bases and defense bases, anyway? Like, bases are static by default. You are not exactly going to be able to uh, attack with them. Unless you also count base ships under these, or well, whatever. So, I have no idea why my ships ran, into, ran in there. Let's go simmer battle. Let's just take a planet. Take a ship, uh, yeah, no, incinerators won't do because they have weapons that cannot target planets. Which I'm not sure my enemies are aware of, but they cannot. Okay, then let's set this ship to a fleet. It's just a regular phaser cruiser, direct fire beam weapons that can definitely hit planets. It's one of the ships I uh, attacked the planet with earlier. Set it to blockade enemy planet and attack on the fence. And start. This is my home world. I don't have a single weapon platform on it, but... Uh, this ship should run away from the planet and not leave the sector. It can't leave sectors anyway, in simulation, because they all start with zero where uh, all of 12 moves left. And this ship does actually run away. In a fleet with the same settings, I do not understand. You don't suppose I accidentally put the uh, ships in another task group in the same fleet that was not uh, set to blockade planet? Hmm. 
Or do you think the presence of troops or something on the planet this made them decide to attack? I don't think uh, units in cargo should count. Let's just check our troops set to be targeted on the planet. Uh, troop, yeah, they are in fact set to, to attack at medium range. Let's sim that fight again and put a troop on the planet, see what happens. Sciencing stuff like this out in detail is and, uh, experimenting with various strategies. It's really the key to success here. Can take a long time, but it's usually worth it. Because of that, is and, uh, and the difference of your fleet is suiciding, uh, like uh, some lemmings, or not dying and killing the enemy instead. Let's take these. Those are new uh, troop designs he's built. Let's just put a couple on them. Uh, yeah, rest shouldn't matter. It doesn't have anything on there but troops and weapon platforms of various types. I think the only real different strategy you should uh, make between planets is planets with a colony that have weapons because the weapon platform gives them weapons or colonies that do not have weapons, so like only shield generators in the weapon platforms. Or planets where all uh, weapon platforms are dead. But I think troops shouldn't count. Oh, yeah, we select Empire 1 and set the fleet. There you go. Attack strategy, create a new planet. Defense strategy, create a new planet. You don't really know who exactly is the attacker and the defender in this. So I just set it to both. Still runs away. Hmm. What other difference could there be between this planet and the one in our simulation? It's just troops and planets of various sizes. Facilities of box stand at home world. No idea. Well, I guess this ship isn't going to do anything. Let's just kill the fleet. What are we going to do with this repair ship? Now, let's give a bit of an overview. I have uh, some fighters and some carriers here. I have 23 uh, ships, 23 destroyers, which are uh, of a higher speed than the cruisers. Mostly I'm with alloy burners and high PD here. They do reasonably well against the enemy ships and the enemy mainline missile ships. Um, yeah, I had some other uh, support ships like minesweepers, other uh, or minesweepers, other unit transports and stuff going around, collecting more fighters, stuff like that. All right, I had this big mega carrier which I was loading fighters on. Well, it's, only, it's not even half full. Needs to load these fighters to uh, what's 50, 56 fighters times 22 kilotons. 56 times 22. It's another 1,200 kilotons fighters. So that's not even going to be full then. These mega carriers are pretty big. Don't think I'm going to build a lot of these because they're not particularly efficient. But still. It's going to need more fighters. It can pick up more fighters here on this planet. Mm. Uh, well, yeah. Now it's for the most part figuring out what we want to do with each ship, which needs orders, and then uh, setting research. I usually do that uh, first on the turns, and uh, then also making a plan. Yeah, let's start with a bit of uh, figuring out what we want to do with our uh, supply ships here. Our reinforcements. You are going to start with recovering these fighters. Okay, and then you are going to go and load more fighters here. Okay, and that should 
10, so it's going to take more than, uh, more than 10 turns. Because actually picking up the fighters also takes a move slot. And that's not represented in the uh, represented in the uh, turn count here, so it's probably going to reach here, but not actually pick up pick up the fighters. I'll just give it an order that has uh, something to do for the next three turns. What is you? You is a minesweeper. Uh, you should just go to the main fleet. It doesn't look like the enemy has built mines yet, uh, but I really do not want to run into a situation where I'm. Uh, prevented from going anywhere just because there's a uh, 50 measly mines. In fact, I have some mines here in this warp point, which is really hard to see. I have special mines which can penetrate shields and armor with their warheads. Uh, they cost a lot more to build, but they've done really well in defeating some very special new warships that the bot sent my way here. Let's do the Klingon colony ship. Where is he going with that? He's trying to colonize. No, that's a black hole. He's trying to, no, that's another nebula. Another nebula. He's trying to colonize something here. Yeah, that's like his home territory. I don't actually know where his home world is. I think it's in. Well, might well be in the system, honestly. Did we get it? Oh, yeah, that is his home world. Oh, I thought there was another system in between here somewhere. But it looks like we've discovered all war points now. Yeah, I think this this system is new. I think we hadn't checked that before. Thought there might have been one or two more systems. Yeah, we have this weird war point here that goes all the way across the map because of, oh, because of an event. This is enemy turf. Uh, this is our turf, our backyard. Uh, I just put a cruiser here. I put beam weapons. And I also have a mine layer coming. I have a scout keeping uh, eyes on this in case this ship dies. But we had eyes on this war point for quite a while. He just has a, he just has 112 fighters there or something. Not even carriers, so I'm not particularly worried of anything coming through this uh, very soon. And my allies put a uh, yard ship here, Yardley. He's kind enough to name his ship sensibly, so you can tell what they are. His carriers are called carriers. His cruisers are called cruisers. His yard ships are called yard ships. I guess the enemy could also guess what the enemy, what the, his ships are supposed to do just by the names. <laughs> I think he likes to build uh, units or stations on these warp points, and that's probably a good idea. <sighs> there isn't actually much I have in these backwater systems here, but this is pretty close to his homeland. So let's give us an overview of what uh, the situation looks like. How do we compare to each other? My empire, uh, my uh, ally, the Klingon Empire. The other side, you should have a good idea of where they are on the map by now. Yeah, we have a complete alliance treaty with all the positive elements, of course. Uh, he colonized class M planets, I colonized class P planets. In warp 10 there is no different atmospheres. Every planet has the same standard atmosphere, but there is five different planet types. And um, we started with different planet types, so uh, we can colonize two or five planet types. Our enemies also have two different planet types, H and P. I share class P planets with the Borg. Which actually meant that when I uh, conquered these H planets from the uh, Federation Federation, I got some planets I couldn't usually colonize, at least not without spending uh, five turns of research into the colonization text, which I honestly want to do pretty soon. So, what do we look like? We only have settings for uh, show score for allies. Uh, my ally was blessed with some good planets in his home system. He's been able to get a lot of research out really fast. Planet numbers are pretty similar by now. I have a lot more ships than he does. Unit numbers are usually confusing because uh, there's a big difference between a thousand fighters or a thousand mines and a thousand weapon platforms or a thousand uh, drones or satellites. 
Uh, our tech levels are different, the spiders sharing tech because we have access to some different racial techs. Warp 10 gives a lot of racial techs to each player. I've tried to research. The thing is a, a slight priority prioritization difference that we do. But I don't really have very, very many good uh, resource planets, so I just uh, made a lot of re uh, research colonies. Yeah, and he gets like 50% more resources than I do. I think he also can't use them all. He gave me some a couple turns ago. Yes, we do actually communicate outside this game. Uh, yeah, what's my resource situation look like? It's uh, totally fine, the income here. I could still afford to build a bunch more. Well, do we have any other ships running around? I launched these uh, fighters from these planets because I wanted to collect them all here so a ship can just collect them from one single spot instead of having to go to each of these planets to pick them up. So I don't to move there and then hit Y for sentry so that I can stay there and not uh, bitch about wanting orders every turn. Mm, you build anything here? Yeah, we built a destroyer here. Yeah. Uh, I have cruisers available, but for the longest time, like with my main fleet, I built destroyers simply because they are faster. Uh, Warp 10 is based on an older version of Balance Mod, and well, even with the same technology uh, and engines, destroyers are faster than frigates and. Well, it's a little bit, a little bit strange. And speed, uh, I decided, was more important than being able to stuff more stuff into a single ship, like with a cruiser. These are faster yet because I researched contra terrain engines, and in fact, I researched the uh, jacked photons to level 3 now. I'm not going to research them any further because this unlocks quantum engines, and I'm not also going to start quantum engines, I'm going to stay with the... Uh, Jacked photons for now. Quantum engines are pretty expensive to research, and Jacked Photon 3 should be good enough. I just wanted a speed advantage because of some very nasty ships that my enemy sent uh, around from here last turn. They ran into my mines without uh, actually hurting me, but it was just luck on my part. They were ships. I could show you the design that have um, these very heavy shields that the Borg get that regenerate very quickly and the tractor beam and nothing else on them and then just set to ram. If these huge subspace deflectors that generate just a lot of shield points and a lot of regeneration and the tractor beam that has like a hundred kilometers range. Uh, let's just show how nasty these uh, rather innocent looking ships are Actually, these are just uh, smaller shield generators of the same type. It's basically like uh, heavy and small armor. Why exactly are they classed as missile ships? I don't know. I'm not sure if that is a categorization that is given by some kind of uh, algorithm or if that is what the enemies set the design type to. Well, let's take uh, two of these against like 10 of my uh, missile f missile destroyers here, incinerators, incinerators 5, I have a lot of. That's why it starts with number 15. Pro tip, if you want to see how many uh, units of a design an enemy has, or how many ships of a design an enemy has, just put one in here. You'll see that they'll uh, the numbering starts with uh, the next free number. So. I have built 14 incinerator 5s, that's why in the simulation the numbers start with 15. So, let's uh, see all these ships get horribly, horribly annihilated. You'd think 10 destroyers would win against 2, right? No, not quite. Well, these are just uh, pretty standard, it was like a single shield generator, insignificant armor. The, ar the armament is 2 uh, alloy burner, temporal missiles, standard stuff, they do double damage to armor. It's not like in vanilla where they can't, where they can only hurt armor. They do normal damage to everything else. Bunch of point defense. 
Aside from that, nothing special. These ships have 2,000 shield points to begin with. And they are set to ram. You can see their hit points going down and going back up because uh, they, re they regenerate the whole shield points in 4 seconds if they really want to. And there they go. Ship set to ram. Tractor beam pulls in a ship. Pulls in more, and it's getting closer, it's getting closer. Pulled it in again, and another ship rammed to death. And that's how it goes. So even if 10 cruisers are mostly trying to stay out of range, get close enough to these uh, swellers, they just get pulled in and rammed to death because the shield hit points uh, are just so much higher than any of the hit points I have. Yeah, they're nasty ships. They are much more effective than what I have without it having any uh, regular weapons at all. What's my current plan for countering them? Uh, well, <laughs> mines that bypass shields do really well. <laughs> and aside from that, fighters, honestly. Masked fighters. This, this isn't exactly masked fighters. But I need more fighters. I just had this carrier drop off some fighters here on this warp point. This warp point. I like to have my uh, system view locked. I need more fighters. This, uh, this carrier needs to go and collect more fighters. Yeah, yeah, just go there, ask me in three turns again from where you should collect fighters. We give this ship an order, this is going to collect mines. You are going to, yeah, you should also go to the remainder of my fleet. Ask me in two turns again. Hmm, this plan is almost done building his solar generators. The planet has two stars and the solar generators are crystal tech that generates resources per star in the system and it has good resource values and all. It's one of the rare situations where you actually want to build these solar generators. Usually you aren't lucky enough to have planets that have good values in all three resources or even just two and multiple stars in a system. So for comparison, these are a little more, more expensive to build, but that's negligible. Especially since, uh, uh, since facilities only pay 10% maintenance costs for, uh, compared to the build price, where ships pay like a quarter of their build price and maintenance every time. So they essentially create uh, 1100 resources of each type, modified by the uh, resource percentages every turn per facility, whereas a regular uh, mining facility would only generate 2,000. So they are 3,000 re resources in total, they are 2,000 each. 2,200 is 10% bonus if you have uh, mining facilities level 2. And this one uh, has good organics value, but I just built mining facilities here. You also don't really need uh, resources of the same the same quantities because uh, yeah that's just vanilla. Balance mod tries to uh, rectify this a bit by making the other resource types more important. But uh, there's one singular truth that remains: mineral planets are the best. Though I have crystalline tech and I require more uh, radioactives than uh, regular vampires would, which is actually an advantage. Because that means uh, ships build faster. Because of how uh, construction works. So what am I going? What am I going to do with these carriers? I filled these back up with uh, with fighters. Yeah, they should all be filled up. Uh, the orders all went through. And there's still 65 fighters here. Let's just move these to. Where the fuck is the war point? This text up here in the corner is quite annoying. I gotta say. And what am I going to do with you? Hmm. Not sure. Uh, just go there for now. Hmm. 
Fun fact, you can only use this menu if you select multiple ships. The individual uh, unit menu. If you want to use the uh, launch and recover man remotely orders, you have to give the orders individually, which is quite annoying. Yeah, yeah, just put all your fighters there for now. I guess I could have flown them over in a group. But whatever. Saves them some supply, I guess. If fighters fly to our system two or three times, they get out they uh, get low on supply, which is not really something you want to happen if they need to and if they need supply to shoot. You just go there to the main fleet and uh, sneeze, or snooze. <laughs> sneeze. <laughs> you said to do anything? No. What's the fleet said to do? Nothing. Just. Uh, Give them all a sentry order. Just hit Y. Select them all, hit Y. Plan isn't doing anything when I conquered it. had emergency build up. So now it's in slow build for virtually ever. These planets do anything? No. I'm building a bombardment ship here because it's close to the home world. Which has all these nasty planet shields which I need to kill. But really, I need more ships than that. Yeah, let's talk about strategy. I'm not sure what my enemy's defenses look like past these systems here. I'm going to build some more scouts and probe. I have a single scout just here in a, in a storm that obscures it to keep an eye on anything that wants to come through this warm world. The sensor range isn't that great, but it should give me a little bit of an early warning. I like doing that. I have one hidden here too, which can see the Federation scout that's also keeping an eye here. Sent one here into an asteroid field, which also obscures stuff. Don't need them against very basic sensors. My sensors already scan at level 3, but I think our enemy has worse sensors than we do. Yeah, it scans at level 3. Hmm. Yeah, information is king in these games. Especially against a player where you don't know if a new ship is just an improvement, an incremental improvement over his regular fighting ships, or if it is going to be something that can uh, kill half your empire before you get around to countering it. What's this? Or oh, that's these four remaining fighters from that uh, the carrier. Why does he have a frigate parked on that? I wonder if he went to intercept them, or if he sent these ships to intercept them? I think his Nova scouts are armed. Even with missiles though, I think. Anyway. Now that I've... Uh, I've conquered this system. Um, I have this system a little bit under control. He doesn't have any ships here. I can see what he builds, I can keep an eye on him. Oh, he's building fighters here. Hmm. Yeah, he could try to like uh, kill my scout with that. And then I have this home world under my thumb, which I failed at invading. Uh, I didn't actually try to invade, I just uh, failed at bombarding it. These are just still two space yards, I would have liked to kill these. Uh, but alas, my ships didn't park on that side of the planet. First order of business is going to be defeating this planet. That's going to require bombardment ships. I need to, uh, I'm building one bombardment ship here, I need to build more. I had my space yards on my home world, all these things. Finish building uh, cruisers this turn. So I, won I was going to set all of them to uh, build bombardment ships instead now. Alternative, I could take all these new cruisers I've built. Uh, the fleet I attacked the planet with was essentially seven or eight cruisers, uh, which are basically this one except one generation early on tech. I could refit all these to carry uh, one or two planet bombardment missiles. That would be um, would be faster than just building new ships. And I could refit them back. So I could be here in four turns, 
5 turns if I spend a single turn building, uh, refitting these with refitting these with uh, Planet Napalm. It would take me 7 turns alone and then another 4 turns to uh, fly the ships over there if I was going to start building new ships. But I only take 6 turns to build in these uh, orbital yards. But still, 6 turns to build and then 4 turns to fly over here. He can build some nasty stuff in uh, 10 turns. He doesn't have access to the Borg uh, subspace deflectors, the nasty planet shields. But still, in 10 turns he can build stuff to fuck me up. It's also uh, not nice that I failed at blockading the planet. Maybe we should put some new ships in there. Mm. Well, realistically, he's just going to count on the fighters. So, am I going to refit all these ships with bombardment? I think I should, before he builds more stuff there. I hope he can't build new stuff that would uh, make these uh, seven or eight cruisers unable to do anything. Okay. How much refit capacity do I have? How many, uh, how much kilotons in tonnage can I actually repair? 55 kilotons of ship tonnage per turn, per space yard. There's one space yard on either, each of these stations. I have seven space yards. And the planet yard. Which repairs twice as much, I believe. Yeah, it's 110 kilotons. So, seven times 55. Plus 110 is 495 kilotons. That means we can build f we can replace 459, f 495 kilotons of uh, of modules of components on our ships. Hmm. If we have seven ships, that means about 70 kilotons per ship. So we can afford to change 70 kilotons on each ship here. Each one of these phasers, oh yeah, I have phasers and pulse phasers. They aren't much different. The pulse phasers are just uh, have one second cooldown, the regular phases have two second cooldown. And they're 30 kilotons each, and I can replace 70 kilotons on each ship. So let's go kill two of these uh, phasers. Yeah, in fact, let's replace that pulse phaser. We'll just make three regular phasers and two, uh, no, three planetary NARPA units. Yeah. They are 20 kilotons each, so all in all I've removed 60 kilotons of phaser beams and put 60 kilotons of uh, NARPA in. And I think I should be able to refit this in a single turn. Oh, wait. This turn we also got new sensors, which means they are also going to be re uh, replaced. That means I am actually going to have 70 kilotons of components changed uh, for each ship. Good. Uh, let's give the kid a name. Disintegrator. Just the aggressive default names. I don't know why exactly he gave these to the Endorian ship set. No, they're not bound to the ship set, the uh, uh, given names. You can type anything you want on here, but these are just suggestions. But he made a special Andorian uh, name file and then just copied the aggressive ship names in there. Probably so the, so the AI has something to name them after. I guess that makes sense. It's called a disintegrator uh, special or something. Disintegrator special. Yeah. Need to adjust the strategy. I um, don't think there's much of a difference between these anyway. It's nice if they don't go too close to the planet so that the point defense has some time to work. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think this will be fine. This is going to be the disintegrator special now. Oh, we should be give it the design type bombardment ship to differentiate it. Yeah, let's do that. What's under here on the bombardment ship? We need to reopen the menu so that uh, the ship list gets uh, refreshed. This is a pure bombardment ship I uh, built, not built, I designed on the last turn. Uh, well, this looks like what we're going to be using. Okay, let's set our ships to refit. We're going to hit backspace to clear all the orders. I just do that pretty much all the time. And I want to give something new orders. And then select all these. Control E is the refit menu. And let's set this to disintegrator special. That's actually uh, quite a lot of money. Why is the refit this expensive? Do these uh, disintegrators not have contraterrene? Ah, oh, they don't have contraterrene engines yet. Ah, oh, that makes sense. So, wait. What ship did I copy from? I copied from Disintegrator 4. Yeah, I made a Disintegrator 4 design with the better engines. Mm. Disintegrator Special needs to be different. Disintegrator Special needs to be uh, all ion engines. Level 3 ion engines. Otherwise we are also going to uh, rip out the engines and replace these and then the ships are not going to repair on a single turn. It should be it though. I don't think there was any other tech that was replaced on these ships. Okay, let's select them all again. Clear the orders, Control E. Select them all again because SE5 is logical, it makes sense. And uh, this. Let's do 3000 minerals to replace. I don't think the planetary napalm is worth 3000 minerals. You know, I think what we should do is uh, just take the obsolete design and build based on that uh, our ship designs. Disintegrator 3. Can't tell what's different though. It's not the crew quarters or anything? I'm not sure. Let's take these and make. Uh, this integrator, this integrator. I'm good at spelling. This integrator, uh, super. I'm also very creative. Sometimes I uh, legitimately sit there for a couple of minutes thinking about what I should name these ships. Even if I have this uh, retarded uh, design list, which I always take stuff from. Oh. Don't need to click that. This is a special PD that fires on a higher rate of fire. Half damage to shield means it's supposed to be uh, less good against fighters. I just mix these in with these point defense phases, which are really strong and have good range and good accuracy. Oh, yeah, also, fun fact in Warp 10, you have these damage mods instead of just the regular vanilla, or in addition to just the regular vanilla. Uh, ship mounts that also affect missiles and uh, point defense weapons because that's fun also affect napalm for that matter the large, uh, large mods also affect napalm oh, right. but yeah missiles and point defense also get affected so oh wait uh, I click the wrong button. We should use copy here, not upgrade, because otherwise, uh, if there's upgrades to a component, I might actually change. Ah, wait. I think I might have researched better damage mounts. I think it would have replaced the phaser beams. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. Let's keep these damage. Let's keep these uh, phasers with the old damage mounts now. I don't think we're going to need to replace the combat sensor. Yeah, let's let's do this. 
this in G right draw super super disintegrator let's call it a bombardment ship let's switch the filter back uh, let's kill the special design once we've set the ships to ignore it do not upgrade to that hit backspace hit control E and disintegrate a super yeah that refit cost is much cheaper this way we're actually going to replace these 70 or 60 kilotons of components and are going to be able to finish that refit in a single turn the suggestion to just put uh, one or two bombardment weapons on each ship was actually uh, for my ally I was going to make these uh, dedicated bombardment ships that would take forever to build and then be useless if you don't have a heavily fortified planet I can just I can just take the uh, bombardment traps back out and put regular phases back in probably in a turn or two after I'm done uh, bombarding a planet okay then these are all going to refit to disintegrate a super class and stay in the system because all the shipyards are here and can repair I like to have uh, forward uh, repair stations on a planet somewhere so I can re do refitting on the front lines easier but I guess this will have to do and then uh, no one planet this is a home world and then it will take five uh, four turns for them to get here after they sit there for one turn so in five turns I should be here again able to try and bombard that planet once and for all Honestly, I don't even matter if I can't colonize this thing back. I just want it dead. <laughs> of course, it would be better to invade it, but uh, I'm not sure we're going to get it uh, into a spot where we can invade it. Particularly because these are planet shield web platforms that don't have any guns on them. Some of his do, these Tyrannosaurus Rex ones, don't also have a gun on them, but the other ones only have shields. So if your ships are set to ignore planets once they have no weapons anymore, they will uh, just wait until other, all other weapon platforms are destroyed. But if these planet shields weapon platforms are still living, uh, then you then the planet still has shields and can't be landed upon. Uh, at least not very easily. Might be some trickery that would, that would make it possible, but uh, I'm not going to try and rely on that. So I think I'm just going to genocide the planet. <laughs> Genocide's fun, right? Yeah, it is. I'd like to invade this planet, but he has pla platforms as well here. Two planet shields, two of the ones that also have a gun. So I think I'm just going to genocide them both. It's not just sucks as I can't recolonize these planets. No, got a glass. Right, I also have a repair ship here that would be able to repair 300 kilotons of ship tonnage. <laughs> Which is almost as much as the entire shipyards on the home world. You know what? You should go here to the rest of the fleet and help them refit. I should start refitting some of these ships. Uh, in particular, I think I should start refitting the minesweepers. Oh, design, shift D. Uh, and refit them with better engines so they can keep up with the fleets. Should I just put jack photons on there? Here, yeah, let us. Direct photons. How fast can we get you? Can we make you 15 speed? Yeah, we can make you have a 15 speed uh, uh, shift. But not 16. Hmm. And let's just leave these two ion engines in here. 3 would make us go back down to 14. So what are contributing here? Yeah. Some bit of optimizing these engines. Hmm. Okay. 15 speed, probably like twice as expensive not really but these new engines are a lot more expensive than these ion engines 250, 150 yeah almost twice as expensive yeah. oh well shredder 2 design 15 speed instead of 12 speed and a lot more expensive anyway you refit and the rest of the ships can just stay there 
<laughs> 5,000 minerals. We do have the minerals, the minerals are not a problem. So, hitting space uh, just gets you to the next ship that doesn't have any orders. Ship or unit group for that matter. This is a spoiler, yeah, I put more of the uh, cool explosion mines on there. Those are the ones that can penetrate shields and armor. I want to keep these close to the front line. I'm not exactly sure where I should deploy them. Maybe I should put them here into the nebula. Maybe I should put them here into that nebula next to uh, the enemy, but uh, that will probably be redundant since I already have these mines here on that nebula covering that area. Um, yeah, just just go here, ask me in three turns again. Maybe I'll have a more pressing need for these then. The ship's going to have to fly down here anyway. Right. Uh, well, we had another ship here with nothing to do. Right, we have even two ships with nothing to do. This is just general uh, unit transports. I use these to ferry uh, fighters and stuff to the front lines. Um, in fact, what you two should do... Well, let's just select one of you. Just go up here. Yeah, it'll be fine. Just go up here and recover fighters. Remember I uh, had these fighter groups here that I said to... Uh, I said to move to the war point so I could collect them easier. And these ships are going to do that. Fortunately, I'm going to have to select them individually again so I can mass recover. The other recovery menu, the launch fighter or launch recover fighter or unit menu, it doesn't allow that because these ships aren't even on that tile yet. And then I would have to select the individual fighters. Or at least uh, say so collect 40 of uh, fighter type revision three, which is which is just a pain. Okay, then I had fighters here. Yeah, you were going to be collected by the mega carrier. Mm. Now I have a carrier on my homeworld, uh, a cargo transport on my homeworld, not a carrier. Now you can go up here, collect the satellites which I was building. So building these satellites. There's a warpoint defenses and I think they'll do fine as such. I have a couple of these uh, satellites already deployed here. A pretty simple design, just a single uh, shield and a single gun. But since they're all uh, deployed in a circle around the warpoint, everything that comes out immediately gets shot by all satellites. And, fun fact, uh, the enemy missiles can't target satellites, so there you go. Um, the image looks uh, kind of strange. Very spiky. Not exactly what I imagine a satellite to look like. But then again, I do not know what Andorian satellites would look like. I think a lot of this chipset is actually co opted from the Centauri chipset. <laughs> I think a lot of the less. Uh, yeah, this, this ship's just, uh, they, they just look Centauri, right? Babylon 5. A lot of the ship sets in the Warp 10 mod that come with that are coupled together from uh, other things. Yeah, you are a scout, you should just uh, stay around, keep an eye, keep a sensoric eye on this planet, on these planets. Oh, yeah, I've built some chargers here. They are beam armed destroyers with 60 moves. They have my new contraterrene engines. Hmm. What am I going to do with these? I should think I should put them also into the uh, invasion fleet. They're not going to do nearly as much DPS as the bombardment ships will, but so... Yeah, 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 you can go there. Go to the... to the warp point. Are you also going to reach the warp point at the same time? No, you're going to only make it to there in five and four turns. In the fifth turn, I will have to ask me where it goes again. Uh, 35 fighters are here. The war point behind the text. Sentry. Okay, that's orders for all the ships. Uh, we had researched better sensors, but only a single level. Oh, we all have tachyon sensors. Unlocked now, that's good. 
um, and uh, engines. So I'm going to update a few designs. You can do this at the beginning of the turn, but I usually only update the, the designs that I actually want to build. And I am constantly building fighters, so let's replace the engines on these fighters. They're going to be 16, and oh god, they're so much more expensive than if, if they just have iron engines. 16 move fighters. What speed is an advantage for these? They have three phaser beams. <laughs> There's some pretty offensive fighters. Mm, yeah, the unit cost on these fighters is getting pretty high. Kamikaze fighters. There was a possible design I simulated against these uh, ramming ships that I uh, showed off earlier. Um, but the Kamikaze ones just don't do enough damage and the, the ships don't all ram at once, so... A couple of fighters would ram, a sh would ram the ship and then... Uh, the ship would regenerate the shields, and the more would ram it, and it would regenerate the shields again. So, what I tried after that was not kamikaze fighters, but kamikaze ships. But with that I would need light cruisers to actually fit enough <laughs> fit enough warhead to be able to kill one of these heavily defended ships. Um, where are they? Here, yeah, the terminator that I was talking about with a tractor beam. 2,000 shield points. Kamikaze fighters, maybe not the best counter. You can just overwhelm them with regular fighters, especially or as or fighters with as much DPS as the ones that I'm building. The, uh, they're still going to be rammed every once in a while, but just because there's so many and the tractor beams have trouble hitting them, it won't be as bad. Mm. Where's that design? Up here. Ashes, yeah, this is a light cruiser design, but just go with warheads that do enough damage to take out one of these ships. And honestly, these uh, cruisers are pro light cruisers are probably going to be more expensive than the ships they are supposed to destroy. So that's n probably not a good decision unless you want to, uh, unless you say I have more industrial capacity than my enemy. So I'm probably going to be able to trade one to one and uh, still win. I could upgrade the engines on the troops. Fun fact about Space Empires 5, if you do not have a troop design you do not get militia spawns. Militia being the uh, free troops you get for having population on a planet when it gets invaded. So even if you don't intend to build troops you should always have designs around. Or a design, I think it just always takes the latest design. And you get like one troop for every uh, 50 uh, 50 million population or whatever. Doesn't matter if it's a small troop or a large troop. I think. <laughs> so, now that I've upgraded my unit designs, I should change all the planets that are building units. Uh, I was building some here because I don't really know what else to do on a planet that's on slow build for ever. Yeah, yeah, just go build 17 fighters. It'll take you, uh. I guess a little longer now than what your slow build time is there for. Whatever. Yeah. The main fighter producing plants are here in the backyard. Finish these. I've set these queues to, repe to repeat. No, no, select you. This one's building satellites, this one's building fighters. I think these here were building ships. We don't have anything here. Yeah, build a yard ship here, then a Q dipper. Another repair ship here. Just support ships which I need. Oh, these ships are going to finish and finish this turn. So I need to queue up something else here so the spare building capacity does not get wasted. Hmm. Oh yeah, I don't need to kill the disintegrator special design. Um, well, I can't delete it, but I can obsolete it. What should we build here? I've built more offensive destroyers. Thing is, I do not know what, what else they have. 
I don't have some carriers, which my ships should do should do reasonably fine against. I have these nasty uh, ramming ships, against which I uh, my current plan is just more fighters. Hmm. Yeah, I think more charges, more just general purpose ships. They they can also bombard planets if they want to. They can assault war points, they can defend war points, they can attack fleets, they can do many things. And that should be good against fighters. So let's upgrade these, build these with the new engines. How fast are they gonna be? 16, 16, 17, uh, we stay at 17 speed. So let's leave the contraterrene engines in. We don't need for 17 speed here. Yeah. Four eject photons, four con uh, two contraterrene engines and 17 speed. And um, almost 400, yeah, about 400 minerals more expensive. For one movement point. Good thing is these uh, engines are also have much more structure, so they're much harder to shoot down. So the internal hull structure goes up. That's a secondary benefit. Yeah, and they store more supply, obviously. But sometimes it can be hard to justify getting expensive engines because it makes your ships take much longer to build and. Make them more expensive to maintain. Okay, Q charger three, charger four. Am I going to upgrade these ships? Probably not. All the ships in my fleet are in various cobbled together speeds anyway. It's always nice when you have a fleet that always goes at least X speed, but with all the different ship designs I have and all the support ships going at different speeds. I'm not going to go on a mass uh, refit spree and say all my ships need to upgrade to the new design in order to have X speed. So that there isn't a single 12 speed to cargo transport that slows me down. And it's a ship that goes and deploys the uh, mines on that war point. Okay. Uh, did we have. Any, we just uh, set these planets what to do. These plans are the building stuff, support ships. Mm, these are also oh, these are even aggravators three. Should have upgraded these to aggravator fours. Planets, secondary plans on my home system. Also building fighters, because fighter spam is uh, fun and for the win. So what then remains is uh, my home world and the orbital yards, which I haven't decided what to do yet. Alright, this ship, this plan was also building fighters. Okay, should be all done. What uh, am I going to build? I think I want more of these cruisers. I wasn't certain about these at first because my ally built some cruisers to just uh, direct fire arm and they uh, all died quite horribly. But I think I want I think want more cruisers. I think I'm going to just build more disintegrator ones. Am I going to build them um, or should I upgrade the engines? No, I think I want them to be faster than 14 moves. So that can keep up with at least the uh, older tech destroyers. That and speed can actually be an advantage in combat. If you can close the range faster or pull range faster, then you take less fire in the meantime. 15 engines, uh, uh, 15, 15 speed, yeah. If we replace a single engine here, it goes to down to 14 speed. That's good. 15 speed uh, disintegrator fives. Almost cost 10,000 minerals to build. Oh. Oh. Obsolete that design. Take this one and open the yard queue manual. That actually didn't take very long to build. I guess we don't have that much stuff yet. These uh, planet lists and the queue lists, they can take very long to open if you have your game progress a little further and if you have a larger map. That's why I don't like to use these. Select multiple, select all the space yards, add to all a disintegrator 5. Well, I take 8 turns to build now instead of 6. Well, the 6 was for the uh, ion engine uh, bombardment ship. Okay, now they have something to do. 
And what is my homeworld going to build? I can build these uh, obviously much faster. Build two and a half and the time it takes them to build one. Do we want a dedicated bombardment ship? No, it's not going to be there in time with the other ones. But there's also the uh, possibility that we are not going to send the ships there and they're going to be. Uh, and that the enemy has built something there to counter them. I don't know, more weapon platforms and there's a bunch of fighters. Mines, who knows? Uh, maybe I should build more. Hmm. I think I should build more um, carriers. The thing is, carriers aren't that useful. Uh, there's little that carriers can do that fighters can't just do by being uh, on their own, deployed as a unit group. Because if you have a carrier loaded with fighters in combat, it just launches uh, however many fighter base this one has, like 20, 20 some fighters every 7 seconds. And, uh, if you just deploy 100 fighters in space, then 100 fighters attack the enemy at once, instead of 20 fighters in 5 waves. So these carriers are mostly useful for uh, transporting the fighters over long distances, and across war points, obviously. But for doing it across war points, you don't need a, you don't need a carrier that's armed and armored or anything, you can just use a, any old unit transport. Mm. Should we build a second Mega Raptor? Yeah. Let's build a second one. We are building many fighters. But you can use carriers, just like any other unit transport, to invade planets. And then it's nice to have one that has actually actually has some defenses on board. Shield some PD, even have a gun on it. In case something else gets close to it. Right, I think I put the gun there because I was worried about it being outranged. Not that the single uh, beam is going to have very long range. So, that's what all this all planet here builds. I think with that we're almost done for the turn. Let's review. We are going to uh, well, retreat this ship here, which was the only one I had left on the planet. I've retreated the rest of the survivors already for... I would have liked to blockade this planet, so in order to deny him the resource income and the research income. This one's mostly research, I think. Uh, but it looks like that's not going to be in the cards for another few turns. Could we divert anything there that can do it? Fighters, if anything? I'm not even sure if fighters actually blockade a planet or if it's just bound to ships. Anyway, he can uh, catch anything that tries to blockade his planets with fighters. And just making a single sh a single frigate that is unarmed or something and putting it on the planet, setting it to run away in combat but not leave the sector. That's pretty cheesy, so I don't want to do that either. If I was going to blockade his planet, I would like to have some actual warships there. I am going to want to probe further into Mr. Twilight Imperium, I am the Borg's space. It's a bit annoying that these three systems here are all empty. And this one down here is two. But these are his core systems here. And I don't know what is up in these. I know he's colonized something here. He took a planet from the Klingons that they colonized. In fact, I should probably send the ship out further, huh? I wonder how much he has a more point defenses here if he has any yet. Well, there's only one way to find out if he has more point defenses here yet. You go there, see if he has more point defenses in the system. Well, it's pretty easy to just conquer a planet, uh, build a couple of fighters, ten or so, put them on a war point, and a scout like that won't be able to come through. Hmm. Yeah, I need more information about what he is doing, what he is, what he has. 
with the uh, very nasty destroyers that had the tractor beam and the insane regeneration shields, I don't want to send my fleet forwards. Uh, they only have missile bo missile armaments, so they can't glass any planets anyway. I could send a carrier or two with them and try to invade planets, but I also know that he has a preference for weapon platforms and I can't do anything against plat weapon platforms, especially not the ones with the nasty shields right now. So I'm just going to sit my uh, fleet at home, lest that they get lest they get destroyed. Because I do not think I'll be able to disrupt him very much anyway. Yeah. Okay then. Yeah, I think the same bombardment fleet that I'm building for this is also going to be useful against him. Maybe I should maybe I should change my construction queue to just build bombardment cruisers, either the mixed uh, mixed one that we're refitting these two or just outright bombardment cruisers. Oh well, well, no, let's leave it like unless it is carriers or rather a lot of fighters can also do quite something. We're going to induce space superiority, and if you have space superiority, you should be able to take your time invading planets. Well, then uh, that's how it is. Oh, wait, we have a researcher. There's still to do. Usually, I set that uh, pretty much first thing in the in the turn. Just go see what's the research, and then adjust. I had a couple techs earmarked by having one percent into them. I want scanners so I can have scout ships with scanners that's why I don't have as many scout ships out right now the ones I have right now are mostly just uh, defensive see if somebody comes in maybe I should uh, just le leave that be but by the time I have the ship with the scanner here that can actually tell me what his weapon platforms are or the ships that he's newly building it's going to take another f another X turns which which he might build new uh, which you might build new uh, war point defenses. So I just want good uh, scanners, so let's just uh, spend 100,000 research on that. It's gonna get me to level 3 or 4 or something. I would like to have scanners that are able to scan as far as my sensors are. Um, yeah, after that, I want ECM and uh, perhaps level 2 cruisers. I'm building a lot of cruisers these days. I would like to have some more stuff on my cruisers, so sort of the overhead of uh, command and control and engines and uh, things like uh, combat sensors gets used better. Because that's the main advantage of bigger ships. Yeah, one turn in, sa in scanners, then finish up whatever level in scanners I want, and then cruisers. Uh, yeah, that should be it. Let's save the game as a warp in, quick save. That's what, I like to, that's what I like to call them. Just in case I want to go back and see what I changed this turn, or if I want to change something and then re-upload the turn later, and uh, generate the PLR file. And that's it.